Are you ready for real faith, real hope, real joy, and real talk? If so, you are in the right place. It's Hope Today. I'm Amy Schaefer. I'm here with Sydney and with Corey. Sydney, what are we talking about today? Well, super excited because if you're feeling spiritually stuck and closed in due to your circumstance, you don't want to miss our upcoming conversation with Real Talk Kim. She's going to break down why uprooting bitterness, dismantling pride, and releasing forgiveness is the key to experience deliverance freedom, healing from the Holy Spirit. You know, Corey, I, I know we are all just super excited because she's a woman full of so much wisdom and just really helps you to get out of those places of darkness and to walk in the spiritual destiny that we're called to be. Absolutely. We're in, a, we're in an age of transparency and we need that. People have been fabricating things for a long time. We got plastic people everywhere, but Real Talk Kim is going to do just that. She's going to give you real transparency, which really allows you to get to the source of it. Just like being in a hospital, where does it hurt? Uh, it kind of hurts somewhere around this area. No, it's going to get, it's hurting right here. That's where God needs to do the surgery. And these type of conversations are healing. And I'm excited to be a part of this today. Corey, that was epic. We're tired of plastic people. No more plastic people. We need the real deal. And you know, Real Talk Kim is no stranger here at Cornerstone Television. She's been here many times. And you know what? She has been through some stuff. She's been through the fire. She's come through to the other side of victory. She's got a lot to unpack and say. So today I ask that you just open your heart, you receive, and, and this really is the time to get up, get out, get back in the game. Don't sit on the bench, don't pout, don't get depressed. It's your life. And Sydney, you're ridiculously in charge. We truly are. And so it's so important that we keep our eyes on the Holy Spirit. And we just want to encourage you at any point during our conversation just to know that we have a prayer line that is always open 24 7 at 888 665 4483. That we will have prayer partners that will stand with you to pray with you and to help you move forward. Well, we, without further ado, we do want to bring Real Talk Kim into our conversation. She's a pastor and popular social media influencer, Kimberly Jones. She's known by millions as Real Talk Kim, and she is passionate about loving people back to life as a mother, a leader best-selling author, entrepreneur, and entertainer. She's first and most importantly, a woman after God's own heart. Real Talk Kim, Pastor Kim, we are so happy to have you with us today. Hi, everybody. I'm so honored to be with you guys. I, listen, that y'all y'all dramatic like me. <laughs> I was listening to Corey, plastic people. Then Amy comes with this big old word. I was like, yes. <laughs> Well, we are truly ready for you. To be, we know you are fully locked and loaded to drop spiritual bombs of truth. And you just re recently wrote a new book called You Gotta Get Up. Can you tell us the motivation why God dropped this in your spirit, place in your heart to write it for such a time as this? Well, you know, I was raised in a very strict religion. My, my dad was a pastor and um, I was, I, I literally thought that God was a genie in a bottle. And so I just figured that whatever I did wrong, he would just come in and fix it. And I walked through my daddy dying about three years ago during the pandemic. And I just had a lot of stuff hit me. And I remember one day I just woke up and was like, man, I've had a lot of junk happen in my life. And a lot of storms I created, right? I created them because I didn't listen to God or pray about it. But I, I found I, I was at a place, I was probably about 48, 49 years old when things start really changing in your life because you're older. And I started praying one night and I was like, God, I'm, I'm tired of these cycles. I'm tired of being up one day, down one day, up one day, down one day. I'm tired of just thinking I can just do whatever and praise you. I want to be at a place where I'm steady. I really wanted a steady place, not a fake place, not a plastic place, but I wanted to experience God for real for me. And I went on a journey, man. And through that came this book, you got to get up. And I, just shared stories. I mean, I dug deep into the word of how people in the Bible uh, that had so many bad things happen to a lot of them, but yet they found their way out. They got to get up and they did. And so I wrote this book just to, just to share with the world, you know, you, you nobody's coming to get you. Mm -hmm. Like, I know we like to bleed on people that didn't cut us a lot of times in life, but you got to heal. 
so that you can have people in your life that love you appropriately. And you can live an abundant life because as long as you ain't dead, God ain't done. And so if you recognize that and you get that place, get to that place where you can praise your through your way through anything and realize that every time a storm comes, it just catapults you into a position that you really need to be in because God don't waste your hell. Thieves don't rob empty vaults. And if you can find that faith in the middle of the friction, he will do works in your life. And so that's why I wrote this book. You got to get up. You got to say it like that, y'all. You got to get up. Yeah, I, I love that. It says you got to get up. And what I really appreciate by going through and reading is just like your transparency of what you walk through in your life. But you did the deep work within and dealing with yeah. certain issues like you talk about bitterness and pride and unforgiveness because those things keep us stuck. Can you dive into that? How they keep us deeply bound by things that God never intended us to be bound by? You know, I think a lot of a lot of a lot of people live with that. Um, you didn't you didn't get the approval from your dad or your mom. Maybe maybe they wanted you to go to school to be a lawyer and you wanted to be a baker. And you go through life holding on to stuff, or you get married to somebody. Y'all been married for thirty years, and then all of a sudden one day they come in and say they don't love you anymore, and you're devastated. Or maybe you raised your kid in church, and now the kid's out there acting up, and you're like, man, I didn't raise you this way. Or maybe a job. You stayed at this job during this pandemic. And after pandemic, they gave you the walking papers. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he does it through offense. He does it through needing validation from people. He does it through, I just want to know why you didn't love me. I want to know what I could have done differently. And we get so stuck on what didn't happen and trying to figure out why it happened that we never move into the greatness that God has for us. And y'all listen, every time a door closes in your life, it is because that door had to close so God could take you to your next level because rejection is literally redirection. It is God's protection. And so we hold on to this unforgiveness. We hold on to this and it, and it, and it, and it shows throughout our, our outward, like whatever is on the inside of us just shows through, you know, we look old older. Uh, we, we start feeling sick in our bodies. We're so angry at a season in our life that we're letting that season define our lifetime. But when God got up on that cross 2000 years ago, he got up on that cross between two thieves. He could have gotten down off that cross, but he stood up on that cross. He got up there. He stretched his arms out wide and he said, for you, it's finished. It's finished for that depression. It's finished for that fear. It's finished for that unforgiveness. It is finished. Now, what do you got to do? You got to get up and realize that every single thing you've walked through is just ammunition that's going to win the world. It is free life college, and it is going to be used for the glory of God of what you made it through. And so I think it's just taking inventory of your heart every day. And if you don't like something, fix it. I don't like feeling this way. Then let's get to the root. Or what is it? Who's in your life? Maybe you got some people in your life that you've outgrown. And yet every time you're around this person, they're still bringing up your past or they're still negative. They're still just coming in and just sucking the peace out of your life. It might be time to move them to the balcony and say, you know what? I love you a lot. But we have outgrown each other. I love you from the balcony at this point because now my life is personal. I want to get everything that God has created for me to have out of life. And you're stopping me. You're stopping me. And instead of walking around saying, man, you just suck the life out of me, I'm just going to take the straw out. And I'm going to realize that everybody's not my assignment. And that's why I've been tired. And so I think it's just realizing that it is our job to look in our heart, to check our ways, don't walk around saying you ain't got no friends. You ain't got no friend because you ain't a friend. Mm -hmm. Start changing some things, right? And getting real with God. And man, I'm living my best life because I did that. Mm -hmm. I got to the bottom of Kim. Mm -hmm. I love that you got to the end of yourself so God could begin to do a work within you. And Pastor Kim, you hit on something that I think a lot of times we don't like to talk about in the body of Christ and don't like to talk about in church. But when you start to do the deep healing, it is sometimes painful of the people that step away, the people that leave, the doors that are closed. Can you just go into that for a moment? Because I feel a lot of people, they don't understand why it's happening going on, but that's necessary when it's part of our healing. Sydney, with elevation comes separation. Like a lot of times, whenever I look at people like rocket boosters, like on a rocket, there's rocket boosters. The rocket boosters fall off at a certain altitude. 
It's just not going to be possible to always hold on to every single person that you want in your life. And that's where the enemy comes in because the enemy will use people that were a part of your last season, right? Now you've decided to start living for Jesus. You don't need to drink two bottles of wine at night no more. You've gotten rid of toxic relationships. You ain't hiding stuff anymore. You're starting to crave more of God. You're peaceful. And now every time you go around certain people, it's like, you ain't no fun no more. You think you better than everybody else. You know, the same old, same old. And the enemy will start, especially, especially if you're empathetic, especially if you're like, man, what would Jesus do? WWYD, right? And we're just over here trying to, trying to fix people and take medicine to people that like to be sick. And so it's just getting to that place where you're saying, God, and I used to lay hands on myself. Y'all, I pray elementary prayers to this day. I'm like, God, I, I, to this day, it ain't nothing for me to lay hands on myself. Come out. You know, I'm just like, I am not going backwards. And I remember just telling God every day and every night, God, expose the things in me that keep taking me back into cycles. Lord, let me see what I need to see and realize that healing is my job. Yeah. Like it ain't nobody else's job to heal me. It is between me and you. And God, whatever you think needs to be done in me, I give you permission to do it and expose it even if I'm dying to hold on to it. And then give me the wherewithal to let it go and move forward. And I would pray those prayers every day. God, I decree and declare over my life that I'm the head and not the tail, that I'm the top and not the bottom. I decree and declare in my life that, Lord, what you're bringing into my life in this season is so much greater than what I'm losing. Don't let me focus on what's behind. Let me focus on what's in front of me. Because the Bible says that life and death are in the power of our words. You say it until you see it. You prophesy it, and then you put feet to your faith. You put feet to your faith and just say, God, I'm going to get out there and do it. I'm going to be the first one in my family to change the generational curses, and I'm going to be a generational curse breaker, and I'm going to bring the blessings of God. It doesn't matter if you've been married four or five times. That sixth one's going to be the best. It doesn't matter if you were an alcoholic and lost your entire family. God's going to re show redemption in your life. Just because you thought the curtain had closed doesn't mean that the production over is over. The curtain had to close in order to set up for the next scene of what God's going to do in your life. Yeah. You just got to see it. You got to realize as long as you ain't dead, God ain't done and deal with you. Yeah. Ooh, you are dropping so many like wisdom bomb and nuggets. And what I, I love the quote that you had in your book, the pain you experience may not be your fault. However, the healing is your responsibility. And that's exactly what you're talking about. And even, I just even feel it going deeper. It's about detoxing our spirits, detoxing what's deep within so that we can rise up like never before. You know, Sydney, I think a lot of mine was even religion. Mm. You know, like I was, I was, I was so just, uh, so just stuck on God doesn't like this. God doesn't like that. Uh, if, if women cut their hair, they're going to hell on a slip and slide. If they get divorced, they're going to hell on a slip and slide. I just had so much religion in me that made me feel like God was a mean God. And when I really hit rock bottom, when I walked through that divorce after 18 years, y'all, 18 years of marriage, I love this man's guts. And after 18 years, this marriage ended and I'm devastated. And I I remember laying there one night saying, God, take this pain away from me. And I heard God say, I can't take it away. You got to get up and walk away from it. This is ammunition for your life. And from that point on, y'all, I did. I started, man, I started working on me. I started watching what was coming out of my mouth. I started allowing myself to get free from religion. I started experiencing God for real. He's a good, good father. He will never walk out on you. In fact, when people are walking out, he's walking in. And he loves to use people with the worst past to create the best futures. And another thing about God is he's the kind of God that will use your hell. Hello, Paul. Hello, Jonah. Hello, Noah. Hello, Walter at the well. He will use your pain as your pulpit. He will turn your scars into stars if you let him. Mm -hmm. That is powerful because I one of my favorite parts in your book, and I know we talked about this earlier, says, oh, hell no moments that God allows in our lives so that we can shift and get out of our situation. Can you share one of yours that you had that you were like, oh, I got, I got to go. I got to get up out of this. Well, I was just messy. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Turn my voice memo on one day because somebody was just like, man, Kim, you, you, I, I would always hear stuff like, you know, that's just Kim. That's just Kim. And finally one day I was like, 
Oh, hell no. Like, you gotta have a oh, hell no moment. A oh, hell no moment. Oh, hell no, devil. You go back to hell where you belong. That oh, hell no moment saying, I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna stop nagging my husband every day. I'm gonna stop being ugly. I'm gonna stop being a gossip. I'm gonna stop being bitter. I'm gonna get my heart right so I'm not jealous of people and walking around bleeding on people that didn't cut me. I'm going after my healing. And this is my oh, hell no moment. Yeah. I went through like six months where every time something would come out of my mouth, I'd be like, shut up, Kim. Oh, hell no. You ain't going to stay stuck. You go get up and praise your way through. And so I think all of us need to have an oh, hell no moment. Right. That moment where you tell hell to shut up. Right. You tell the devils and its little imps that can't touch you that you are rising above it. You're going to stop stalking them on Facebook. Stop calling their mama. You didn't even like his mama when y'all were married. Stop trying to keep tabs on people and start getting your confidence back and realizing I'm coming out. I want the world to know <laughs> and changing the trajectory of your life, baby. Stop saying you would die for your kids and live, live. Live your best life. Kim, I need a hanky up in here because you are straight <laughs> up preaching. Kim, I just turned 50 this year. For all of the 50 plus crowd, is it too late? Are we too stuck in the mud? Are things too set or can we actually change in this season? And what if we're exhausted from trying all the time? You know what, Amy, I turned 50 last year. I just celebrated my 51st birthday. And at 50 years old is when I really started shifting. I started getting in the gym. I lost all kinds of weight. I got big old guns. Y'all can't see them right now because I don't want to make nobody fall. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got guns. I started getting in, a, in my feminine girly air. Man, it is the 50s are the best. You hear me? Something happens to a woman in her 50s. The 50s are like, we making the young and sweat. You hear me? Us 50 year olds, we coming back, baby, with all the glory and all the beauty. So no, it's not too late, Amy. Just stop focusing on the year. Stop focusing on the mental pause stop focusing on the the craziness we feel in our heads go get your blood check get your estrogen check and live <laughs> that's awesome wow, wow. I, I i definitely want to chime in and say something here real talk kim you said something i i've been stuck ever since you said something in this interview you said stop you stop taking medicine to people who like to be sick we talked a little bit about people pleasing and you being yeah. delivered from people pleasing. Can you just walk us through how God really just set you free from always feeling this need to help people, to please people in, in any way you feel uh, free to share that? Corey, I, because I'd walked through a divorce and I knew that nobody in my family had walked through divorce and I was in church. I mean, I literally walked out of Bible school and married the guy that Pastor Rod Parsley told me I shouldn't marry, which is my spiritual dad now. How ironic, full circle. But I, I spent so much of my life trying to get it church people to validate me, mm -hmm. trying to, to, to measure up to, and, and yo, I'm telling you now because of social media, if you're not saying enough about war, if you're not sending people to hell every time you preach, if you're not preaching hell, fire and brimstone. We got literal pastors and people that will bully people. And act like I lived under condemnation 24 seven, even when I wasn't doing anything wrong because I never felt like I could measure up to church people. And I had to get free, Corey. I had to realize that church people are some of the, I'm sorry, they are some, they're the, they're the ones that really kicked their wounded. And and I had to get up so that I could be a voice. All of us sitting in here, Corey, Amy, Sydney, we are a mouthpiece of God's grace to the world, of how God loves with skin on. We are him with skin on. And I had to get free from that, Corey. I had to realize that my validation didn't come from Christians. My validation doesn't come from even people that don't want to validate me, people that still want to bring up my past or remember the old girl that was nay nay and not pray praying. And I had to realize that my character will outlive th live their lives. My fruit will outlive everything that's ever said about me. And so when you get to a place where you don't need people's validation because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and if you are just hell bent 
on getting people to celebrate you and love you and validate your decisions. It's so sad because I think so many of us are living our lives in a box and in a life of what other people expected us to live it as. And we're miserable. We're miserable because this person thought we should live this way or do this for a college education. Or, and if we would just live the way God created us to live, when he called us, he did not call a conference call. He called us. And so when we get free from what y'all think about me and you think about me and you're free PR for me when you're talking about me, and you get really just, God, I want to please you. Then you will live a life of freedom and doors will open that you never dream would open because God needs a people that ain't worried about the hoorahs and the yays, but the people that will make heaven more crowded. And that's what we're doing here today. Get free from people so you can make heaven more crowded. I love that so much. It's, our focus should be on the souls that are broken, the souls that are lost, and because of our stories, because of our testimonies, because of things that we've walked through, the hell that we've been through, we're able to testify to someone else. And one thing I love that you shared in your book, it says, you know, we don't know the price of someone else's oil and the breaking and the anointing is necessary for us to walk in those places God has called us to be. Can you speak to that for a moment for somebody who may not understand why am I going through all of this? Why is all this happening in my life? But it's truly because of the call that's on their life. I really believe, Sydney, that that every single thing that we've walked through in life, our purpose is connected to that. Like if I would have never walked through divorce, which I hated, would never wish on anybody in my life, I would not be loving people the way I love them. If I would have never had to move back in with my mom and daddy at 36 because I lost everything with my two sons, I wouldn't have that empathy. I would be in Puta Canta with a margarita. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like not even thinking about God. Yeah. And so I believe that your purpose is connected to that very place that you had to fight like hell to get out of. Those nights that you laid in your bed and cried and you felt hell was knocking at your door. Those nights that you were like, God, I am not going to get up out of this thing. This thing's going to take me out. But yet you woke up the next day and did. And I'm talking to anybody that is watching today that is saying, man, I have done too much wrong. I, my, my dream board doesn't look like anything my life has ended up looking like. And I'm really mad about it. And today you get up. You get up and praise your way out. You pull your big old thick thigh. Even if it feels like a turtle stuck in peanut butter, move. And just decide in this last quarter of 2023, I'm going to leave everything at the feet of Jesus. And I'm running into the greatest destiny that I have, whether I'm 58, 68, 78, or 88. It ain't never too late for God to use the time you got left to squeeze all your purpose in. So come on, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Amen, amen, amen. Patrick Kim, thank you so much for all that you've poured out. Thank you for love all you. that you do for the kingdom of God. I mean, you are truly inspirational. We just love you so much in our book. You got to get up, got to get it. Grab hold of your life after being knocked down, held back, and left out. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we'll be right back in just a minute and we're going to have a time just to speak into your heart, speak into your purpose and spur. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> and there's no, we're going to actually, my bad. <laughs> and there's no, there's no break. We're just going to have a time of ministry. We don't have time for a break because <laughs> we got to get up. Like we're fired up. We got to get up. We don't care how old you are, how tired you are, how exhausted you are. It's time to take the bull by the reins or whatever, the horns or whatever and get up up in life and show up let go forgive move forward don't just don't sit there and be stuck anymore Corey. i feel the anointing <laughs> on this message today yes, yes it's powerful because i think a lot of people are dealing with something and i know that this has been an area that i have struggled and i came up with a word for it it's called expectational grief and that's when you are grieving people that you think should be there for you or a situation that you think should be there th for you. But with time with God, he'll do this for you. I want to read this scripture today. Psalms 37, four through five. It says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. 
we talked about something today about people pleasing and, and, and Real Talk Kim just really went there about the things that she had went through and being delivered from that need to be affirmed by people. And God in this scripture is saying, delight yourself in the Lord. A lot of times I will look at the sunrises and look at the sunsets and I'll look up at the clouds and it'll bring me to a place of connection with God that despite everything that's happened, the wars and all that is happening in our lives, whether you're going through financial issues, relational issues, you're going through imposter syndrome, maybe you're dealing with depression or you're having suicidal thoughts that the enemy comes in. He says, when you begin to take your focus off of the earth realm and you get into the heavenly realm and begin to just ponder him and delight him, that's what David would often do. He would sing songs and make worship melodies in his heart. It would transition his perspective into the perspective of the kingdom. And I'm telling you, one thing about that is when you begin to put God first, like he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you, God does a transi transition and a transaction. He'll start taking that heaviness. He'll start taking that sorrow. He'll start, you, you won't even realize that it's happening, but as your hands begin to lift, he'll send his angels and they'll just be grabbing that stuff and, and doing that thing. So begin to delight yourself in the Lord. Commit your ways to him. Don't get in the habit of thinking you have to figure out every situation. I know for me, I want to get more into the habit of talking to God about everything. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's the smallest thing. God, what should I put on? God, what should I eat today? What should I cook today? God, how should I deal with this situation in business? God, how should I respond to this email? God, what should I text back this person? I'm upset about a family member today. How should, how should my tone be on the phone? What he wants is come closer to God, come closer in an intimate space. And the word intimacy to me breaks down as into me see, let me be transparent, not just translucent because translucency is I can see a little bit, but I don't get the whole picture. But transparency is I can see right into where the real need is. And I believe in that transparency, don't be afraid of the Lord. He knows everything about you and you can't hide from him. Just like David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I, if I go up to the highest mountain, you're there. Wherever I go, you are there with me. And God's saying, listen, I'm with you, I understand you, and I wanna get closer to you to show you who you really are and what you've really been called to do. God is doing a wonderful work, Amy, and I'm just so grateful that he still allows me to be here today. You know, Corey, just hearing you talk and Real Talk Kim and Sydney and myself, you know, we've, we've had to unpack some things in our life. I love to travel, I love to go places, but when I get home, the worst thing is unpacking, getting everything put away, everything cleaned up. It's just, sometimes the suitcase, the mess sits there for much longer than it should. So maybe today it's time to get up. It's time to unpack some things, get rid of the shame, get rid of the hurt, the unforgiveness, the failure. Men and women in the Bible have had to do it. We have had to do it. Real Talk Kim has showed us how to do it. It's time to get up. You gotta get up. There is hope for you today and God will help you. On tomorrow's Hope Today, learn how to stop letting your past define your future. Author Christian Bevere reminds us that our past does not determine who we're becoming and that God is more than able to redeem what was once broken. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.